Okay, here are the solutions for force problems two. Again, with all these solutions, my advice to you is to work the problems out first and then come back and see the solutions. You don't learn as much if you just copy down the solutions. In fact, you probably won't learn anything at all. So, number one, I have a boulder that has a mass of 25 kilograms and is sitting on top of a scale. So if we draw it, because it has mass, I know that there's going to be weight or the force of gravity acting down on it. It's equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And if it's sitting on a scale, the normal force from the scale is pointing upwards. And that's what the scale reading is going to be. So from this free body diagram, what we see, oh, sorry, normal force is the scale reading. From this free body diagram, first off, sitting means the acceleration is zero. That means the net force is zero. And as always, that means we have constant velocity. In this case, it's going to be a constant velocity of zero. So one way that we could get the net force uh, is by looking at our free body diagram and saying that it's going to be the up force minus the down force. So the normal force minus the force of gravity. So zero is my net force because we're sitting there. That's equal to the scale reading minus the force of gravity, which is 25 times 10, because that's mass times gravity. So zero, the net force, is equal to the normal force minus 250. So the normal force and the scale reading is 250 newtons. Now, we're going to tie a rope to the boulder and pull upward with 350 newtons. I want to know what the acceleration is. In this case, if I am pulling up greater than the weight, that is enough to lift the boulder. Now there's no more normal force because we lifted the boulder up. So down we have the weight of the object, which hasn't changed. It's still 250 newtons. And up we have the tension force, which is 350 newtons. So my net force is going to be the up force, 350 tension, minus the down force gravity. So it's 350 minus 250. My net force is 100 newtons. My acceleration, once I have my net force, is going to be net force over the mass. So the acceleration comes out to be 100 newtons divided by 25 kilograms, or 4 meters per second squared. Same situation, but now I want to make the boulder move up with constant velocity. Now, seeing constant velocity right away should tell me that the acceleration is equal to zero, and the net force is equal to zero. So if we look at our free body diagram, we still have the force of gravity or weight down, uh, and we still have the tension force up, so my net force is still going to be tension minus the weight. Uh, so my net force is zero because I have a constant velocity. And that's equal to the tension force, which we don't know, minus 250 newtons for the weight. So my tension force is equal to 250 newtons. Those two things balance out. That's how much force we have to exert. We want to make it accelerate at negative 2 meters per second squared. Looking at it, again, the tension force is up. The weight is down. So the net force is the tension force minus the weight. Again, it's from the free body diagram, so that's really always going to look the same. So the net force acting on this boulder, which we don't really know yet, is going to be the tension force, which we also don't know, minus the weight of 250 newtons. So what we have to do here is, is find, we need this net force before we can find the tension force. The other way we can get net force is that it's mass times acceleration. Uh, so that net force is... 25 kilograms times the acceleration of negative 2 meters per second squared. My net force comes out to be negative 50 newtons. So we're going to put it back into that equation. And I have a net force of negative 50 newtons uh, is equal to the tension force minus the weight. So we're going to add 250 to both sides. And my tension force comes out to be 200 newtons. All right, we have a new problem. We have a truck with this mass, and there's a winch pulling on it, and we want to know the force of friction trying to slow the truck down. 
Oh, sorry, that's 2,000 newtons. So we got to draw a picture of what's going on. There's my truck. I know we're pulling with 3,000 newtons forward. We got 2,000 newtons pulling back. There's weight and there's the normal force, but we're really not moving in that direction. And we know uh, that we're not falling through the ground. So those two forces are the same. So when it comes to net force, we're just going to look at that 2,000 and that 3,000. We're just going to look at things in the x direction. So my net force is positive 3,000 minus 2,000. My, my, my net force is 1,000 newtons. But I want the acceleration of the truck. I know acceleration is net force over mass, so it's 1,000 newtons over 200 kilograms. That makes my acceleration 5 meters per second squared. How long, oh, that's time, will it take the velocity of the truck to reach 12 if it starts from rest? Well, this is a guess method problem. So from there, I see that my initial velocity, since we start from rest, is zero. I see that my final velocity is 12 meters per second, and I just found my acceleration to be 5 meters per second squared. With all that, I want to find the time, because it's asking how long will it take. So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We're just going to plug our numbers in. 12 is equal to 0 plus 5t. So 12 is equal to 5t. We divide both sides by 5. Uh, and time is equal to 2.4 seconds. Just a little bit of a reminder of things that we've done in the past. Starting again. Cool. All right. So with this helicopter that weighs 500 newtons, the rotors exert a force of 400 newtons. I want to know what the acceleration of the helicopter is. So first off, we should probably draw a free body diagram. I've got the weight of that being 500 newtons. That's my gravity force. I have my normal force, or sorry, my lift force being 400 newtons. So if I want the net, if I want the acceleration, I need the net force. So we'll make the 400 positive, the 500 negative. Uh, my net force is 400 minus 500. So my net force is negative 100 newtons. So if I want my acceleration, it's net force over the mass. So my acceleration is negative 100 newtons divided by the mass. I need the mass. I know that the weight is equal to mass times gravity. So 500 is equal to the mass times 10. Divide both sides by 10. And that mass comes out to 50 kilograms. So the acceleration is negative 100 newtons divided by 50 kilograms. But the acceleration comes out to be negative 2 meters per second squared. Which means we're accelerating down, which is exactly what we'd expect uh, because the weight is bigger than the lift force. Now, if I want to go at a constant velocity, for this next part, still have a free body diagram. I know the weight is down at 500 newtons. I know the lift is up, but I don't know what it is. The lift is positive. The weight is negative. And because it's a constant velocity, I know my acceleration is zero. And my net force is zero. Uh, so the net force is going to be that unknown force of lift minus 500 newtons. But since the constant velocity, the net force is zero, so zero is equal to the unknown force of lift minus 500. So the force of lift is equal to 500 newtons. That's what we got. So now we want to draw a position versus time graph for, for the, the helicopter when it's accelerating and when it's moving at a constant velocity. So on the left, we'll do accelerating, negative two meters per second squared. And on the right, we're going to make the acceleration equal to zero. So if we're moving down and we're accelerating, then it's going to it's going to move down and it's going to be a curve down because it's negative acceleration. So it's going to curve down like that. And then for constant acceleration, we have constant velocity, which means our position graph is a straight line. But if we're moving down, it's going to be constant velocity down. Number four, we have this free body diagram that shows an object. With mass 2 kilograms, it's moving to the right with a velocity of 6. The friction is negative 6. Uh, a tension that we don't really know acts on it to the right. How large must the tension force be to move to the right at a constant velocity? 
So looking at that free body diagram right now, net force is going to be the tension force minus the six Newton force. I don't care about the up 20 and the down 20. It's not really causing me to move. We're moving to the right. All we care about is the stuff to the left and the right. Now, we are moving at a constant velocity. So what that means is the acceleration is zero and the net force is zero. Because the net force is zero, zero is equal to the tension force minus six Newtons. So that tension force comes out to be six Newtons. Part B, how big must tension be to accelerate to the right at four meters per second squared? My net force equation is still the same. It's still going to be the unknown force of tension minus six Newtons. But I'm going to have to do something else to find the net force. Because I'm accelerating, the net force isn't zero, it's mass times acceleration. So it's going to be two kilograms times the acceleration of four meters per second squared. So my net force comes out to be eight Newtons. But that's not my answer because I'm still needing that force of tension. That's just my net force. So I'm going to stick it into the net force. 8 is equal to the force of tension minus 6 newtons. We'll add 6 newtons to both sides. And the tension force comes out to be 14 newtons. If tension is 0, what will the acceleration be? Again, we have the same net force equation. Net force is the tension force minus 6. So here the net force is going to be 0 minus 6. So it's just negative 6. And the acceleration is net force over mass, so it's negative 6 over 2, or negative 3 meters per second squared.